OK, today we're going to look at uh, talking about art and writing about art more precisely. Uh, during the GCSE and your A-level, you're going to need to talk about art in more depth than you did in Key Stage 3. So let's look at uh, looking at the first artist we're going to look at is Picasso. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through a structure and framework that can help you get the most out of it and maybe present better ideas. Right then, I'm going to share my screen with you now. If you look in the files, you'll see that I'm giving you the handouts um, on a PDF and one as a PowerPoint. It might be a good idea to download these to your computer just in case the link ever uh, disappears. Okay, so first of all, let's uh, share our screen and uh, let's get working on it. Okay, hopefully now you can see on the screen here, Artists Research and Picasso. Uh, we're looking at Picasso uh, at the moment because that's our first artist we look at it in year 10, but all the things we're talking about today are appropriate for any artist that we look at, from now to lay level on to uni. Okay, artist research. When it comes to writing about artists, it can be difficult to know what to write. You need to make sure you write about information that's relative uh, or relevant. It's, uh, it's too, all too easy to cut and paste a big wave of information that actually we don't really need. So think about that. What do we actually need to know about this artist? And here's a couple of tips to start. First of all, who is the artist? Well, we're looking at Pablo Picasso. And where are they from? He's from Spain. But you may need to go through because he traveled quite broadly. Uh, when were they making their work? Now, Picasso's a very interesting person because from the age of about 15, right through to uh, when he died, uh, he was producing work. He was an incredible artist to produce and work. Um, you probably produced hundreds of thousands of pieces of work from little folded sculptures uh, to large mural painting paintworks to tiny prints that he signed off. So this is an artist who produced an incredible body of work. Are there contemporary artists? Well, this is a modern artist to say, but contemporary usually refers to uh, artists that are working today. It's important to understand some of these terms. So. Oh, as I say later, keep a dictionary of thesaurus next to you or Google when you don't understand things and uh, it'll all become a bit clearer. But it's important you work through this period where you're learning a vocabulary to express yourself when talking about artists. Uh, so what other artists were associated with this artist? Look up with Picasso in particular, we're looking at Cubism, but this he was linked with a lot of different art movements. He was quite a pioneer of many many different movements in art and was involved with a lot. From Picasso's pink period, his blue period, um, he went through quite a lot of stages before he hit the cubism. And there were other artists around the time that can claim that they helped invent it and who he was influenced by. For example, George Brack was an artist that he was uh, working with in cubism, one of the other pioneers of it, but they were heavily influenced by Paul Cezanne. First of all, why are we looking at Picasso? Well, we're looking at Cubism at the moment, and that's going to be our strong link to uh, Picasso. And so that also brings you on to what, you know, what links you with the theme. We're looking at the theme of still lies through Cubism. Why does the artist interest you? Well, obviously, you're doing a project on Cubism, so this artist is one of the most relevant artists you could choose. So when you write him, about uh, Cubism and Picasso, it's important to select an image of it. I would suggest the still life at this point in time, because we're doing still lives and it will connect easier. Put the image next to the text. So when you're writing about it, imagine you're reading a magazine. They often will have a little image referring, referred to in the text. Always put the name of the artwork and the artist underneath it, and the year is also important. So these are some sentences that can help lead into this sort of information. I find this int artist interesting because the artist relates to the theme and explores uh, what and So you're talking about why you're doing it, why it's relevant to you. Talk about the subject matter. Talk about the media. Talk about how the painting makes you feel, or what you think it feels. Is it a somber mood? Is it melancholy? Uh, what sort of atmosphere is it creating? Once you've talked about the artist's work, you can then bring your work into it and say how, why your work links to 
Picasso. Now, the obvious connection is the cubism. You're trying to replicate his style of work. One of the questions there, this, uh, this artist works in what style? He's working in cubism for you. So you can talk about that. We've talked about what other artists uh, produce a similar work um, or what artists were working at the same time as him you could bring in as well. Maybe slightly different artists that weren't working in cubism. What were his contemporaries doing when he was doing this? What was Matisse doing? What do you think Picasso was trying to achieve in his paintings this time? What do you think he was trying to do with cubism? Research it and give your opinion. I'm pretty much last on this. What do you think about it? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? But it's important you can't just say, I don't like it or I hate his work. Because you've got to say why. You've got to be constructive. I can talk about work for a long period of time that I don't like personally but I still could tell you what was good about it or what I felt didn't work about it, why I didn't like it. It's like you can't say uh, that's a horrible colour because that might be my favourite colour or that's a nice colour, might be my least favourite colour. You have to tell me what is good about it or what is bad about it. I might say I love the green there, it reminds me of, uh, reminds me of the sun shining on, on grass and you might say it reminds you of mildew but that's the reason you dislike it. It gives you an uneasy feeling to look at that colour. So you have to tell me why you like something or dislike something. At the bottom of this page here, you can see, is an example that somebody's written about the artist Patrick Caulfield. This gives you a good idea how you can use these cues that are going at the top to create a, uh, a little piece of descriptive writing, an annotation about an artist and their work. Okay. So here's a lot of other ways to help analyze the work and how to critique it. So first of all, content and visual description. Talk about the piece, tell me about it. And that brings us on now. We'll have a look at one of Q uh, Picasso's pieces here. It's a cubist piece. So uh, content and visual description. What is the piece of artwork we are looking at? Okay, so we'll talk about, we'll give the name of it, this particular still life. And we'll say, that, well, this is a painting. He's painted it in oil paint. Um, the subject piece is a still life of uh, bottles of uh, Pernod, uh, uh, which is an alcoholic drink. And there are glasses on the table. Uh, looks like a small round wooden table. In the background, there are lots of names, uh, possibly that were written on the walls. Uh, it's all broken up and it's fractured. So you start describing it. You say what you see. In this case, it's a 2D piece. 3D piece would be related more to sculptures or maybe a relief. When we are talking about describing a piece of work, we talk in formal elements like line, tone, texture, colours, shapes, marks of composition. And if it was a 3D piece, we'd be talking about its scale and shape. We're going to look at that in a bit more detail in a moment. Um, what words we can use to describe the line or the tone or the texture. Meaning, mood and message. What do you think the work is about? Is it just a representation of still life or is he trying to say more? How does it make you feel? Does the, does the painting have like a calm mood? Or is it a sad mood, happy? Does it make you angry or confused? What does the work remind you of? Uh, can, when you look at it, does it remind you of an advert maybe? Does it remind you of, well, tell me a bit about how you relate to it. What do you think the artist was trying to say? Did he have a message? Or was it just a simple showing what was on the table? How was it made? Was there any build-up? Maybe you can find some sketches that Picasso's done uh, that relate to this. So you can show his development up to cubism. What materials were used in it? It's also another fact that this is oil on canvas. But it could be you find a piece that's uh, a print. What tools were used? And again, going back, you know, how did he develop cubism? Which maybe shows some earlier pieces and then later pieces. A 
we talked about the artist developing the ideas. That's about researching it and looking at what other work he was doing at that period of time or earlier. I've mentioned it before, but a dictionary of thesaurus is an excellent aid to anybody writing any essay, but particularly in art, if you come across words you don't understand or you want to find a better word of describing its shape or tone. And on that very point, we're going to look at uh, how we would use other words to describe. OK, so art critique. We often think of critique as being about saying bad things about a piece of work. You're being, oh, you're being critical. But if you think about a film critic, they don't just say films are bad. They also say films are excellent, but they're still criti criticising a film or critiquing a film. So let's look for how we can do this. What words can we use? So when we're talking about line, and that's the sort of line of the drawing or the painting, we can talk about that line being flowing or delicate or simple, bold, thick, thin, fine, vertical, horizontal or flowing. That's just words to describe the line of the drawing or the way the brush is flowing. The tone of the piece, is it subtly painted? Is it contrasting, which means is it extremely dark and extremely light? Is it muted, which means that all the colours are merged together a little bit? Is it the, are the, the panels are it flat? Or are they quite tonal? Is it light to dark? Is it dramatic? Has it got is it shadowy? All this tells me about the actual physical tone, or maybe even the mental tone of it. How does it make you feel? It's a dark piece of work. Or it could just be the picture looks quite dark. It's very dark colours being selected. This quite often refers to furniture or a sculpture, etc. But it could also occur, uh, refer to the way the paint is on the canvas. Is it rough? Is, the paint, is it painted finely? Is it smooth? Is it coarse? Is it an uneven finish? Again, relating more to sculpture, but this can work, uh, especially with cubes, cubes. And is it an organic shape? Is it uh, curvaceous? Is it geometric? If you think about cubism, you could very much have irregular or cylinder shapes in there. So this language could be used very much in cubism. And we talk about the movement of the art piece. Now, sometimes an artist is trying to show movement, but other times, it, well, that's with Picasso, it might be a still object on the table, but the brush strokes show a certain movement, almost as if maybe they're trying to encourage the feeling of something's fallen off the table or your head is moving around. And you can talk about then the placement of things, uh, or the stillness of it, or the rhythm of the pattern. There might be a rhythm built up in the way that he's putting things together. Colour's important, again, with all artworks, but with cubism, sometimes the colours are blocked in, sometimes they're warm colours, sometimes it's cold. Sometimes, you know, this, uh, I mean, with cubism, there's quite often a tonal gradient to it. And it with Picasso's work, sometimes it's, it's muted colours, which is all brown tonal work or grey tonal work, but other times it's big blocks of red, big blocks of yellow, or bright, vibrant colours. But the work we've been doing with the oil pastels is more often than not being quite bold and vibrant. Size of the artwork is important. Now, when we see it in, on the internet or in a book, it all looks small. But it's important to look, look up the size of it, because it could be you're looking at a piece of work that's very small or the size of a wall. Now, that would change the way you looked at the art. So refer to that. Another broad term here, uh, saturation, which is refers to the brightness of the colour. Geometric, which we've gone through before, is the shapes, like a cylinder, it's geometrical shapes. Is it organic simply? So you've got other words here that can help you. Uh, talking about the mark making broken dabs of colour. Try and find and broaden your vocabulary for talking about art. This, will, this is going to be a gradual process, but needs to start here with Picasso and Cubism. Just throw in a few other words at you, dramatic, strong, subtle, minimal, tonal. If you don't know what words mean, look them up. You've got Google at your fingertips and you've got, a, I'm sure you have a dictionary in the house that'll help you to understand these words. Don't be afraid of admitting to yourself that you don't understand something. Just look it up, it doesn't take long. Okay. Uh, as I said, you'll find those handouts in the sheet, and I'll also put a link uh, down for a little YouTube presentation about Cubism and Picasso. Um, I hope that this has been useful, and I hope that you, uh, I hope that you find uh, writing about Picasso enjoyable and informative, and I hope it helps you then build on this 
So when you're talking later in the year about pulsazan or Lucian Freud, you can refer back to this and especially the notes giving you clues to what other words to use to describe line or tone. I uh, hope they'll be useful to you. Okay, good luck.